You know, in 20 years of doing research into B2B selling and buying, I think one of the single weirdest, most interesting, counterintuitive things we ever found in all of that work was the idea that the better and better you get at positioning your offer on the merits of value that are specific to an individual stakeholder. So the more you personalize or tailor your your message, your offering to what individual stakeholders inside the buying group care about, the less likely that buying group is to actually buy what we used to call a high-quality, low-regret deal. That's the bigger deal with the broader scope at the higher price point and feel better about it all at the same time. Now, again, this is exactly opposite of what you might think would happen, right? You would think that the, the better I get at positioning my offer to what each of those individuals cares about, the more likely that they're all going to be super excited about the solution and ultimately buy the bigger thing. But that's actually, not only is that not what happens, but the exact opposite happens. You don't increase your likelihood, you actually decrease your likelihood likelihood that that customer is going to buy the broader solution. So what's what's going on here? Well, the, the first thing we decided when we saw this was we had no idea what was going on here. But the more we dug into it, the more we realized there's actually a really fundamentally important dynamic about B2B selling and more importantly, B2B buying at play here that we just absolutely have to understand as we build out our customer engagement strategy. Because the idea is, yes, well, it is absolutely true in B2B that it's not companies that buy things, that, but, but people that do. It is equally true in B2B that it's not people that buy things, but groups of them that do. And understanding the physics, the dynamics of that buying group and how they, how they interact with each other turns out to be critically important. At the end of the day, so what's behind this very strange finding? It's the very fact that these individual stakeholders, whether there's 5 or 10 or 15 or more, not only have to agree with you, but they have to agree with each other. So in other words, we can't just get a yes from each one of them, what we used to call a collection of yeses. We have to get a collective yes. That group has to agree with each other on that broader scope, on that greater vision. And if we're tailoring or positioning or offer what to, what, to what each one individual cares about, we're not helping them reach that collective yes. We're not giving them the, the tools they need uh, that they often lack on their own to come together and reach agreement on a broader scope approach. So oftentimes I think when we sit down and talk to our customers about the outcomes they're seeking to achieve, the challenges that they're looking to overcome, we need to escalate up or elevate up one level, maybe two levels in altitude to find those bridges, those common connections across the stakeholders and build a collective agreement around what they're ultimately trying to do so that they don't just agree with us, that they agree with each other. Bottom line is you work with your stakeholders. The idea is not to do a better job of connecting stakeholders to us, but to do a better job of connecting those stakeholders to each other and mapping out those outcomes at that collective level. 